Okay, best friends, let's get started with number one, how to love yourself again and find your self-worth. Number one is extremely important because this is the first step to your self-love self -love journey. You have to do this in order for you to see a drastic difference almost right away. Number one is start by cutting off people and places that emotionally drains you. Okay, maybe the reason why you don't feel like yourself is because you're giving too much of your time to people in places that don't elevate you, don't level, make you level up, don't motivate you. When I mean by places, I mean your workplace. A lot of people don't talk about this, but we need to talk about this. You know, I was a waitress for seven years at Red Lobster, and on, it took me seven years to realize the reason why I wasn't so, I was, I really wasn't happy, and I saw myself changing, like having a bad attitude and not my happy-go-lucky self, is because that job literally drained me. It's not even a company itself. Like Red Lobster, to work for that company, you know, it really put money in my pocket, but to deal with customers, rude customers, to deal with petty, you know, uh, co-workers and petty managers. That can take a toll on you. So maybe you see a shift in the way you, you're acting lately. Take a look at your job. Are you happy in your job? Is it causing you depression? You know, I used to, the only reason why, you guys probably like, why would you stay in a job that you were so depressed you know, for seven years because I was on my own since I was 21. I had my own apartment. So um, working as a waitress was the only way in my head for me to get money enough to take care of myself, take care of my rent, my bills, because it's expensive. Okay, my rent back then was like, what, $650? And that was a lot to me back then. And um, so I used to work at Red Lobster because every time you work, you get money. You could go in there with a dollar and come back, you know, and make $400 for the night, $200 for the night quick and easy fast money but then i told myself is money worth your peace and your happiness because you're losing yourself sis so if my my story working at the lobster you know reflects what you're going through then sis you gotta take a step back and ask yourself the same question that i asked myself is the money worth your peace of mind is the money worth your self-worth you know i was also upset because I wanted to be a manager and they never turned me into a manager and I was so upset because I knew it, I knew real life, I could wait just in my seat, I could do like eight tables, flip like eight tables, I knew the ins and outs, but you know, that didn't happen for me, I never got promoted, I was just stagnant in a job that was literally depleting me of my joy and happiness. My effervescent, bubbly self, I wasn't no more. I had, I started losing patience. You know, I, I would, I would even, I was too tired to go out with my friends, like, or too tired to come visit my mom and stuff like that. And when I did visit them, any little thing they did irritated me. And that's when I knew it was time for me to get out that goddamn job. And my mom used to always tell me that. But I used to be like, are you going to help me? Like, don't worry about it. Like, are you going to give me money? And all money is not good money. Let me just say that. Okay, so maybe you are a waitress, maybe you even an exotic dancer. 90% of exotic dancers, after they finish dancing, they always tell people like, you know, the money was good, but I wasn't happy. Even Eve, the rapper Eve said that in her earlier interview, she was pretty much saying that she made the most, she made thousands of dollars as a stripper. And she was like, why am I not happy? Why am I not happy? And she just realized like, this just isn't for me. I'm not gonna degrade myself, I'm not gonna do this. But you know what? I don't even judge you ladies, you know why? Because it takes time for you to, for it to hit you like, okay, this is what's causing me to act this way. I need to act on it right now. I need to quit, do what I gotta do so I can be happy. So if you gotta do what you gotta do, what you gotta do. I'm not, who am I to tell you to, to stop doing something when, you know, that's how you make your money. But there's other ways to make money. You know, once I took my channel serious, I was able to do this full time and love what I do. You have to do things that you love, that you're passionate about, so you never feel like you're working. I'm, I, I'm telling you, like, it, it, you'll feel so much better. And when I say about cutting off people, it's not just, you know, your man. Cut off friends. Um, family members can be extremely toxic. A lot of you say you have an estranged relationship with your mother. Sis, it's time for you to move out. Move out because I noticed when I moved out, me and my mother, we was always close, but for some reason, as an adult living with my mom, I just couldn't. You know, we bumped heads a lot. But the minute I move into my own spot, we are the closest we have ever been. So sometimes, you know, it takes quitting your job you know, distancing yourself or moving out of a place that you gotta be faced with arguing with your siblings or arguing with your family every day. Maybe it takes you to move out. 
to quit your job or even altogether just move to like Atlanta or like somewhere else like Florida where it's sunny all day to improve your mood and improve your overall life. We have one life to live. You're going to live it struggling. You're going to live it in a toxic relationship with fake ass friends, with, with, surrounded by people you can't really talk to because if you do, they're going to judge you. Come on now. This is about you. You got to fight for your life. You got to fight to love yourself again. You got to fight for your self-worth journey. This is going to take a lot of tears. Let me just say, I, all these steps took me years to mask. I wasn't this confident and I, never, I wasn't this happy. It took years, trial and ever. I used to sit down and talk to God like, you know, I know I prayed for a job. I know I prayed for friends. You gave it to me, but I'm not happy. And, and then I realized, sis, Paige, God didn't give you those people. You chose those people. Because when it's God, it flows. When it's you, it's forced. You got to always think about that. When, when you have a new circle of friends and you're like, oh, I'm so happy. My last friendship told me that. Like, I was so happy, but no. God puts people in your life to show you for lessons, not blessings. You know, so stop being around people thinking that they're blessings and the whole time you're sad as hell. You know, I'm telling you, like, it's crazy. Number two, how to love yourself again and find yourself worth. Number two is practice celibacy. I know a lot of you ladies like, er, skirt, what? Uh-uh. No, sis, like, I, I, I agree with number one, but number two, I can't. Why should I be celibate? How's that going to help me with my self-worth, self-love journey? Well, let me tell you. Practice celibacy. This will eliminate men coming in your life with bad intentions and will help build your self-worth. So maybe, you know, you've been in toxic relations, toxic relationships after one, like one another, just bad relationships. You're talking to guys, you're dating guys, they don't take you serious. They just, they sleep with you. You know, the sex is great, but everything else they lack. They're not there for you. They're not, um, they're not trying to bring you home to their mom. And you're like, Damn, I'm a good woman. Like, why? You know, these guys are not sticking. Every time I like someone, they're not sticking. Number one, you're probably giving it up too quick. Guys, you know, they like it at the moment, but they're not going to respect you. Deep in their mind, they can be like, all right, this girl is my Melanie Fiona, Fiona my 4 a.m. smash and dash. And number two, when you abstain from sexual intimacy, you know, you're, you have a clearer mind. Now you know exactly what kind of man you're dealing with. Because we sleep with men that are bad for us. And because it's so good, honey, we stay. And do you know every time you stay with a man that literally uses you, that literally doesn't value your kitty cat, you diminish your self-worth? Do you know how hard it is to get back your self-worth after you let men after men just use and abuse you? It's not going to be easy. Some women never bounce back from it. Some women never regain their self-worth and love themselves. They feel like if I sleep with a guy, I I'm, he's going to love me. If I sleep with him, it's going to make our relationship closer when it's not. You're going to find yourself, you know, you're going to find yourself feeling empty inside. Like there's a void. There's a void because you guys don't have a real connection. The only connection you have is sexual. You know, I've been celibate, a, uh, what is it, a year and three months now. And it's been, I've been, I feel so strong and I feel so in control of myself all because like, I don't just like, I'm not sexual. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not physical with anyone, you know, now as clear as day, when I speak to a guy, his intentions, you know, when you're sexually frustrated, <laughs> you don't even care if a guy's good for you or not. You just want to get your rocks off. But let me just say that. You, you're going to regret it. You're going to regret being sexually frustrated and just giving it up because right after the sex, once again, you're going to feel violated. You're going to feel like your self-worth is depleted. Like you're going to feel like, damn, why did I sleep with him? Do you ever feel that way, ladies? Comment below. Do you ever feel like after you slept with somebody, you feel like a part of you was just gone with them? Like you feel disgusted? Like you need to take a shower or something like that? Like, you know, um, that movie set it off. Jada Pinkett. Uh, she really wanted her brother to go to college, so she slept with some older guy for money, and she came home, and I'm so happy they showed that scene because that, that can really, um, I feel like that scene is what happens in real life. Girls sleep with guys for money, or they sleep with guys because they're cute, and they're left with nothing. They're left feeling less than, and that's exactly how she felt. She went home, she took a shower, and she was just trying to scrub it 
her dignity off her. Like, she couldn't believe that's what she had to do. And come to find out, her freaking brother never enrolled, enrolled in college. So she felt so disgusted with herself. You know, a lot of times, women, you feel disgusted with yourself. You, you feel less than, you don't feel like you're worth it because you've done some crazy things in your past. But your past is your past. You are in power of your future, okay? Period. I don't want to hear no sob stories. I don't want to hear you can't bounce back. Let me tell you, you can bounce back from anything in life. As long as you have God, you, you, ooh, as long as you have God, you can bounce back. Because maybe people won't be forgiven of you, but he is definitely forgiven of you. Which brings me to number three. Number three is pray. Ask God for strength and guidance to heal who and what broke you. Um, let's say you really want to find yourself worth. You don't even know where to start. Sis, start in prayer. When you start in prayer, you come in as a cat, you come out as a lion. Anytime I get anxiety, because you guys know that, well, I don't know, if, a lot of you probably don't know, but I suffer from really bad anxiety to the point where I was actually diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. Like, it's uncontrollably, uncontrollable. Like, I could talk myself into not getting anxious about something, but it just keeps rewinding in my, in my mind. Like, if I have a problem, I have to solve it or it's gonna take control of me. And then I prayed to God. I said, God, I know I was diagnosed with this, but I know that you are bigger than any type of diagnosis. So God, please, in the name of Jesus, heal me. I know that you're in control, you know? And then I saw this quote that said, when you stress and have anxiety over something, you know, it's like putting yourself through it twice. A lot of the times people have anxiety about things that's going to happen in their life that doesn't even happen. Your thoughts, oh my God. Your thoughts is extremely powerful. How you think about yourself, how you feel about yourself can literally change how people perceive you, how you perceive yourself. Let's say you're not that confident, but if you show up confident, like right now, you guys think I'm so confident. Early in my girl talks, I wasn't so confident. I used to doubt myself. I used to feel like, oh, what if I don't get this amount of subscribers? I'm not that funny or I'm not that interesting, you know? But then I said, you know what? Just do it. Don't try to... Don't project that. If you project that you're not confident, if you project that you're not going to get followers and subscribers, it's going to show on screen. So, you know, you know, go out of your comfort zone page and really just be your most confident, most happy-go-lucky self and see what happens. Now, over 500,000 subscribers later, you guys love me and you guys, and I'm, I'm just so happy. And it's just been a long time coming because it's not easy. I know it's not easy finding yourself and being confident when you don't want to be confident. So that's why you got to start with prayer. When you start with prayer out of nowhere, like you're just going to feel like better again. Every time I pray, I feel better. I can talk to my friends, my family, my mom, and yeah, I feel okay. But when I talk to God, I feel like the Holy Spirit is in me. Like, and I'm not trying to offend anyone, anyone that doesn't believe in God. This is just what, every, anytime I do a girl talk, I talk about things that work for me. Prayer works for me and it works for millions of people around the world. Let me tell you, like, Oh my God, I've been in my room crying and no one can help me. I felt so alone, but and I, I prayed to God. I, I started singing gospel music and I felt so strong. I felt so good. And I want you guys to feel good and strong too. You know, so start with prayer. All right, Bella Game, let's get started. Okay, move on to number four. Number four, how to love yourself again and find yourself worth. Um... Don't allow anyone to walk all over you. Be kind, but assertive. Loving, but real. I used to have a lot of people walk all over me. That's why I'm always preaching about speaking your mind, being assertive. Because if you don't, people will take advantage of you. You know, it's crazy that when you have good people in life, instead of appreciating good people, they want to just use you. They want to change you. A lot of people that affected my life, they change me. Then I have to say, oh, no, Paige. You can't be like this. You can't be mean to people that's nice to you. I started being mean to people that was nice to me because I felt like, mm, what's, your hidden, what's your hidden agenda? What's your motive? What's your intentions? You know, but not everyone deserves that side of you, okay? So you want to pick and choose your battles. You know, some people really um, love you and you just push them away because of everything that you've been through. You can't do that. If you want to regain your self-worth, let, let people know how you feel, but then go right back to being your happy-go-lucky self. Right back into your confidence. Right back into, you know, the, the woman that everyone looks up to you for. You never want to be like the people that changed you because you're going to be exactly like them. All right? Don't be mean. Don't be nasty. Don't seek revenge on people. Let God handle your enemies, you know, and um, 
if anybody got you effed up, you let them know, but keep it pushing and keep it moving. You know, because the longer you stay mad, it's just gonna conjure up in your heart and your heart is gonna be just ice cold. You're not even gonna be able to feel no more. You're gonna be numb. And that's, what, that's the last thing you wanna do is be numb. The last thing you wanna do is be a person that nobody can stand and a person that nobody wants to be around. All because you're hurting inside. And I always, every time I look at someone that's acting out, I just, you know how there's a quote that says, damn, who hurt you? Like, why you like this? It's real. You got people that really are hurt and they don't know how to deal with it, you know? And they, you know, sometimes you can lose yourself in that hurt and pain. This video is about self-worth leveling up. You can't level up if you drip drenched in pain. You just can't. It won't work for you, you know? And I'm here to tell you that, like I said before, you can get through anything, 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 anything. Don't ever, you know, let what you've been through in your past dictate your future. Because that's going to be a, a sad life. I'm telling you this right now. Number five, my final tip, how to love yourself again and find your self-worth. Number five is stop dating men that do the bare minimum to keep you. Part of finding your self-worth after losing it is realizing you deserve better. So never settle for less. It's really that cut and dry. You know, if you want to build your self-worth again, it's, it's very important that you let these people go. Like I said with number one, not even just people. You, the men that you, that you have in your life dictates how you feel about yourself, whether you believe it or not. So if you were a guy that celebrates you, the way Kim celebrates, I mean, Kanye celebrates Kim, the way Nipsey celebrated Lauren, the way Beyonce, the way Jay-Z celebrates Beyonce, you're going to be 10 times the woman you are. You ever saw a quote that said, um, women who are loved correctly are like 10 times, 10 times more of a woman than they ever been? It's so true. So if you were a guy that makes you feel like shit, you get your confidence, everything, you're going to feel like it. That's why it's very important that you with a man that celebrates you, that supports you, that treats you like you're the best thing ever. Because you are the best thing ever, queens. You are the best thing ever. If you were the guy that makes you feel like, oh, you can never get better than me, that's when you take that hefty trash bag and you throw them away. Period. And that pretty much sums up my girl talk video on how to, you know, start loving yourself again and build your self-worth. If you guys love this video, definitely give it a big like, comment, and thumbs up. I love you guys so much. Until next time. Wait, hold up, Bella Gang. I cannot end this Girl Talk video without telling you guys about this hair. I'm currently rocking Icy Hair 613 Blonde, 22 inches. This hair, oh my God. I was really skeptical about um, having blonde hair again. As you guys can see, I haven't had colored hair in a while because Every time a company would send me like blonde hair, I would wash it and prepare, the, you know, and, and, style the, and style the wig unit. And I couldn't even style the wig unit because it would tangle up when I washed it. Lucky for me, I'm very thankful that Icy Hair has really great quality 613 hair. I wash and condition this hair. Um, I didn't get no shedding. Of course, when I plucked it, it's shed. But after that, I blow dry it, straighten it. As you can see, absolutely no shed, shedding, no um tangling whatsoever customer service was great that the minute um i placed the order i got this hair um this is how the hair came in and i just i don't really have anything bad to say about this hair the only thing is it is on a little bit on the thin side when it comes to the ends i probably will cut this in a bob so that it can it could be you know it can have the same fullness from here to at least right here because towards the end it gets really really thin and I hate thin hair, but luckily I straightened this hair. So straight hair, you know, it, you can get away with, you know, your hair being a little bit thin. But other than that, I see hair did a really good job with um, this wig unit. I, it's very soft, very soft, yakky texture. I was thinking about coloring this hair. Um, <laughs> I really have nothing bad to say about this hair. Usually I could, I could say, mm, I don't like this, I don't like that, but. I really love it. It's it it took well to heat. You know, a lot of the times when you put when you apply 
um, heat to colored hair, you know, the iron, it will start shriveling up. But this is really good hair quality. So if you're thinking about, you know, coloring your hair, but you need a good um, uh, and, and, and trustworthy hair company, definitely go with IC Hair for your for your colored wig units or any wig unit. I'm gonna link their information in the description box below. Once again, this is a straight texture, 22 inch hair from Icy Hair. I love it so much. Oh my gosh. But anyways, I'm gonna end this video. Thank you guys for watching.